In this final Unit 4 recording, we were talking about how to add statistics for the subform to the main form. I'm going to be using my pizza orders database. If you haven't been following along, you might want to go back to the previous recordings because we are going to be using this form customer orders, and you do need to have a form with the subforms. What I want to know underneath here is how many pizzas did this customer order total? How many cheese sticks have they ordered total? How many coupons have they, how much coupon value have they used? And how much money have they spent here? Uh, for this person, it doesn't make much sense. For, for the second person, Adam Sandler, we would want to know that he ordered 40 cheese sticks. I'd calculate those. The technique here is not simple. It is tricky. It's not something I would have come up on my own, but the book does show you how to do it. But I want to run through it live here so that you can see it and hopefully be able to make it work for yours. The key here is to calculate the statistics as part of the subform and hide them. We don't want the statistics, the total, showing here. Okay. We want to hide them, but then have them and but then make them available to this main form. So what we have to do first is go to Design View because Design View is the only way that you can get to this subform to edit it in a different window. So I'm going. We could just double click it over here, I suppose. But I'm going to take this topmost handle. This seems to work best. I've selected my subform. Take this topmost handle and right click it and open the subform in a new window. <coughs> Misnomer. It's actually a new tab, but that's okay. Here's my subform. The way that we create the totals is we add them to the form footer. By adding them to the form footer, they're hidden because up here this is a detail record and this detail is repeated for every single record and we don't want the totals in there. So we're going to put them in the form footer instead. To add new fields, you use the text box for calculated fields. So I'm going to use this text box and I'm going to click down here and there's my field. If I'd been a little smarter, I would have moved it over. But actually, where these are positioned doesn't matter because they're going to be invisible later. Now what I need to do in this box is figure out what its control source is. Its control source is simply a formula using either count, sum, average, or any of the other functions that are available. To make this simple, I'm just going to type them by hand. So I'm going to go into the builder, okay, and I'm simply going to type and I'm going to say that this is equal to the count not doing what I want it to here. Count is supposed to be a function so let's leave the equal sign out. I want the count as a function parentheses, oops, as a function tab of the order ID field. When you're counting things, it's best to, I think it's best to use the primary key because those are going to be unique and so we can count them. You can just click on OK. Notice that access adds the equal sign for me. I didn't need to do it. And now this will have a count in it. it counts the total number of orders that this person has. So that works pretty well. The other thing you need to do though before you finish with this field is give it a name because when we transfer it into the subform on the main form, the main form needs to return refer to it. If it doesn't have a name, that's going to be very complicated. So we're going to go over here to the other tab, and here's the name tag, and this is called text10, and that's pretty lame. What I do is put a, put a txt prefix on it for a text box, and this is going to be, um, what am I going to call this? doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. Number of orders. Again, using that camelback technique, prefix, and then every word is capitalized thereafter. And I just need to do that for the other four statistics that I want. So I'm going to add another one. And then we'll just park it here so it would be close to the other one. And this time I'll give it a name first because I'm already on that tab, and I'll call this one the text uh, total cheese sticks. And for the data, I'm going to type it this time. I'm just going to say equals count. And there's my count function of the G sticks field. Close parentheses. So you can type it manually, or you can go to the builder and use the tools there to make some of these things happen. But these formulas are so simple. And I said count, they're so simple, but you got to think about it. I want the sum of the G sticks, not the count. Okay, so I've given that one a name and the formula didn't, yep, it did stick. Okay, now another one. 
And again, where they're located doesn't matter, so I'm not going to mess with that. The control equals the sum of coupon. Parentheses. And I need to give it a name, so we'll call this text total coupon. And one last one. I want this one to be the text total order total, which is kind of redundant, but we'll leave it go. And this is going to be equal to the sum of the order total. All right, so now we have all of these values that are part of the subform. I'm going to close the subform and save it. All right, now we don't see those values. They're not in they're not that readily available, so I'm going to add them now. And I'm going to put them below my subform. Right? I can put them anywhere on the form. I can put these statistics anywhere on the form I want. Okay. And let's start off. And here, once again, this is a calculated field, so I have to add text boxes to my main form. I'm now on my main form, and I want to add them here. So now the positioning is a little bit more important. I'm going to click. And the control source here, I'm going to use the builder because it's a little easier. I'm going to go to the subform. Here's my subform. Right. And for some reason, I haven't figured this out yet. For some reason, sometimes this appears as a, as a subform and sometimes it appears as a subreport. I don't know why it's a subreport. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. Right. But it appears as a subreport. If you're lucky, it appears like this, the subform then your fields will be over here. You can just scroll down and find the TXT field that you used. In this case, I don't have that. All right, so I'm going to double click this. And it's still not going up there, so I'm going to have to manually type it. That's annoying. FRM order subform. Now it did pop up, so I just press tab. And then an exclamation mark, and then type in the field name. Text, what was it? number of orders. Click on OK. Puts it in there. And let's change this label here. You have to type it yourself. Number of orders. Now let's see if that worked. I'm going to go to, this, I'm going to, go to form view now. Number of orders is one. Let's go to the second person. Number of orders is three, so that seems to work. I don't know when I practiced this, I got a subform. This time I got a sub report. I don't know why it's choosing that. Okay, this is a form. When I added this sub form to it, it should have been a sub form, not a sub report. Uh, I'm getting a sub report. In your case, it'd probably be a little, if you're lucky, it'll be a little easier because you'll have uh, a sub form there. And when you do, you can simply double click on TXT number of orders. Okay, so now I've got to add the rest of these and see if I can do this without getting too crazy here. So let's try it again. Now I need to make a little more room. I think I'm just going to stack these up on top of each other. You could put them next to each other. You can do all kinds of things here. I'll try to line them up. Okay, this one, the control source. Let's see if I get a subform this time. This time I got a subform. I didn't do anything. What's different? I have no idea. All right. There's the subform, and I want to grab the TXT total cheese sticks. And notice it does basically the same thing. It takes the form name and it puts a dot form. That's not necessary. Exclamation mark field name. So that's what I did by doing it manually. So if you get a sub report, I'm glad this happened in the recording. If you get a sub report, you'll have to type it manually. Okay. But normally you'll get this sub form, and it'll work just fine. So I'm going to click on OK. And then change this to total cheese sticks. I'm going to worry about the alignment of these a little bit later. Let's just test that one. This person's got 15. Uh oh, didn't like that one. Interesting. All right, so let's go back to design view. I didn't expect that. So I'm going to come in here and check to see what I have here. I have form text total cheese sticks. Why can't you find it? Maybe my formula on the other page is wrong. So let's go back. Well, let's add the other two here. If the other two work, then it must be the formula on the other end. 
add another one. This one go to the builder. Hope I still have a subform. I do. I want the total coupon. Here we'll flip things around and we'll say coupon total. Right, that one works. So there must be a problem with the formula that I entered for this one. It's what I get for typing it uh, by hand. So I'll have to go back and check that one. But let's add that one last field. Tell you what, let's, I know we can rearrange it in a minute. Let's add one more, but notice I'm running out of room here. So I'm going to add it over here on the right hand side instead. So one more time, back to design view, add one more field, and let's park it over here. This one will be, there's my subform, txt total order total. And we'll change the label to total spent. Test that one to make sure it works. Looks pretty good. Go to the next record, looks like about $50, $60. Yep, pretty close. So that seems to be working. So we've got an error here, so I need to go back to my subform and fix that. So I'm going to design view, click, right click, open it in another window. And it's the cheese sticks formula that's screwed up because the sum is in square brackets. So let's go back in here. And take out the square brackets around the sum. You pretty have to study it. If you can't figure it out, my advice is to remove it, delete it, start over again, see if that works better. Okay. Save that, close it, and then look at this form again. And now uh, the cheese sticks is working. Okay, next thing I want to do is improve the appearance of this a little bit. I think I'm going to take the number of orders. And my, let's go to layout view, it might be a little easier. I'm going to shrink this down. Most people aren't going to have that big a box necessary. And maybe we'll just take this whole thing and park it over here. Be nice if it aligned to the left with those. So let's just move it over a little bit. Not too much because this thing is going to get in the way. Okay, and now these others are just totals, and maybe I'll just have one label that says total and line them up underneath these appropriately. So let's try that. Uh, let's just make this one total. Oops, total. And we'll park it over here, kind of lined up with the size. And this one lines up pretty good with that one. Cheese sticks, I think I could shrink it. Well, it lines up pretty good. Total cheese sticks goes over here. Okay, we'll move it up a little bit. And it looks like it's lined up pretty good there. And then coupon total, we'll move it up here. And we'll shrink it down a little bit so that it lines up and looks very similar to the coupon up above it. Don't need these labels anymore. Delete. And finally, I think these two things I want them to be formatted for currency. So then go to the format currency. Currency is usually two decimal places. And my form looks pretty good. A couple more things to make this uh, form a little bit more user friendly. This is covered in the chapters. First thing I want to do is anchor this as if I shrink my field size, this is just going to be stuck here. And one of the things some people recommend you do is for some fields like this, you anchor them differently. I want my select customer to always appear in the upper right. So I'm going to select the field and I'm going to, I think I have to do this in design view. Let's find out here. Nope, anchoring in layout view works. And I want to anchor it to the top right. Okay, now it's at the top right of the form. And as the form, and I can move it over. I can still manually move it, right, but now it's anchored to the top. And if I change the size of this window by removing the property sheet, for instance, my customer stays in the right. If I change the size of the form, customer stays to the right edge. Right, so that's what anchoring is all about. 
And the other thing I can do to make my form a little more professional, a lot of people get confused, particularly if the subform is very large, by this record and this record, which one are we talking about? Well, you can, by bringing the property sheet back, actually change this label instead of calling it record. You can change the label to something else like order and change this one to customer. To do that, you just click on that word record and actually selects the entire subform. And then under the format, you can find the navigation caption right there. I want this to be order. Then I'm going to click on this record. And that didn't do it, so let's select the entire form up here. Trouble with that one, might have to go to design view. So it looks like it. Let's try the, oh, that black button, did it? The one to the left here that selects the order. And here's my navigation caption again, and we'll call this one customer. And so now this one is a visual clue that we're changing the order number, and this one is changing the customer number. So some final touches to clean up the form and make it a little more professional. And again, the book does talk about all of those.